Hey guys, welcome to the FlowTrack conference pre-show. I'm Jojo. And I am Kevin. We are here live, taped actually, in FlowTrack HQ to talk about three conference championships that will be live on FlowTrack this weekend, Jojo. That's right. The Big 12 championships, the Big 10 championships, and the Mountain West championships running from Thursday through Sunday this weekend. So. There's a lot of track action Tons. if you want to get your fix. Tons of track. And I'll, we're going to tell you why you should watch these races. Yeah, so I'll be at the Big Ten meet with Ryan Fenton in Bloomington, Indiana. You are going to be? I will be in Waco at Baylor for the Big 12s along with Gordon and Lincoln. Oh, so we have full Pretty teams, pumped. coverages, previews, all the stuff, some features on the site as well. But what we want to do with this show is just run through a few key events in each conference that you should look out for. This weekend, we're going three per conference, right? Nine That's total. That's right. Nine. And we're going to go kind of from distance oriented down to the sprints. Exactly. So that means we're going to start with the Mountain West. Yes. Because one of the marquee names in the NCAA, Josh Kerr of New Mexico, is racing for the first time. Yeah, who you can see right behind He's us. He's right there. Racing for the first time since setting the collegiate record in the 1500. What do you think he's going to do? I think he's going to do enough to win which for him should be a, a fairly controlled, fairly easy effort. That is a tough conference though for mid-distance and distance. It's not just Josh Kerr, Clay Lamborn, Dylan Maggard of Utah State in there, also Cole Rockhold of Colorado State. So you look at someone like Josh Kerr, you say, well, he just broke the collegiate record and he did it in such a fast race. He'll have no problem with his conference and, and he probably won't, but he's gonna have to run a little bit. Um, and I'm also interested to see just how many races Josh Kerr you know, does this weekend. Is it a 15-8? Right. Is it just a 15? I mean, how do they manage his races going into the championship season? Right, because New Mexico men aren't one of the top ranked teams to win the whole thing, right? right? But last year, Josh did run the 15 and the eight, so presumably he could do the same. But uh, as you mentioned, Clay Lamborn of Utah State, he's run a full second faster than Josh in the 800. Yes. He's run 147 low, you know, almost in that 146 range. And the 800 final is only about 90 minutes after the 1500 final. So I could see Josh, you know, trying to trying to keep that 15 kind of slow, not push himself too hard yeah. to get ready for the eight. But with guys like Dylan Maggard in the field, he's fast. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the other athletes react to Kirk, because Kirk can win whichever way, slow or fast. Yeah. Obviously, he can go from the front, push it from 800 out, or even earlier out, or he can wait and kind of be confident in his kick. We've seen him win both way ways. You mentioned that Lamborn Kerr battle. I mean, last year it was right down to the wire in that 800. You know, Kerr got the got, got, got the victory, but it was very, right. very, very close. Do we think we'll see him in both this weekend? I think we will. I, I think there's no reason. There doesn't seem to be a, a, an obvious reason to deviate from what he did last year. And I would imagine that doing the 15-8 double in a pretty competitive conference like the Mountain West serves as almost a nice tune-up for the championship uh, regional and national portion of the season. Absolutely. gets used to the rounds, right? I mean, as impressive yeah. as the race uh, Brian Clay was, and it was incredibly impressive, it's a one-off race, time trial, very structured setting. So to get in there with really good competition and have to deal with rounds, I think it's the perfect situation for Kerr heading into the next uh, phase of the season. Let's stick in the Mountain West, though. But let's and let's stick with distance. But let's go women's five thousand here. What do you think? Women's five k is that's going to be a loaded race. Maybe the best uh, women's five k of the entire conference championship weekend. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got reigning NCAA cross country champion Edna Kurgat. You have the reigning steeplechase champion Ali Ostrander, and then you know New Mexico teammates Wayne Kalati, Alice Wright will probably be in there. Right. Last year, Alice Wright beat Ali O. This year, I think it could be a different story. I mean, obviously, Edna is running for New Mexico now. Mm -hmm. She's got to be the favorite. She does, and it's funny because this comes right after the, the Peyton Jordan meet where we were expecting it to go super-duper fast. Yeah. It didn't quite go as quickly as we had anticipated, and it also didn't go as smoothly as Zali O would like, too. So right. She ended up falling in maybe the last... 400 meters, 600 I mean, meters? Yeah, at the worst time you could yeah. fall because it was right when the windup was happening. If that happens earlier in the race, maybe you can recover and recuperate and get back, but it was at a very tough spot in the race. She did well to finish, you know, to get that mark so that way she doesn't necessarily right. need to worry about, yeah, oh. Yeah, I mean, she still got up in 1545. Yes, falling and running 1545 is very good. <laughs> if, if there's no conversion chart for that, but it's very good. And it also I think means it she doesn't have race. to worry about getting a regional qualifier exactly. this weekend. Exactly. So that kind of changes the dynamic of the race. Right. She can race to win 
and she did really well in that championship race indoors, right? I mean, she stuck with uh, Krista Schweizer and, and the other you know, top runners for a, a long time and in, indoors in both those races. So I think she's going to give Kurgat a really, really good race. The only, the only thing is if she ends up running the 10K again. Last year she right. won the 10K on the first night of competition. And that's a race that's going to take a lot out of you. Yeah. Even if you're not running, you know, PR effort, that's still, that's a lot of miles to run on the track. Yeah. What do you think the New Mexico women will do in terms of, like, which races they'll run? Because they have an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> I can almost see a lot of them doubling back and doing 5K and 10K. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm looking at, like, Alice, Weenie, Edna, someone like Charlotte Prouse, you know, she's steeple a steeplechaser, so I see back. her doing the steeple and right. maybe the 5K, because that's the following day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see her jumping in the 10K. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's a chance a lot of these women do 5K and 10K, and then they're all equally tired yeah. for the 5K, or some of them don't run the 10K sure. and just do the 5K. I'm, the I mean, Wayne Kaladi and Edna Kurgat, I've never done a 5K, I've never done a 10K on the track right. before. Right, yeah. We, so don't, we don't expect them to run the they 10K. They might not, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, possible. Five thousands at the end of a conference championship are really like a hot mess. A lot of times, yes. everybody's <laughs> doubling back. Coaches are putting everybody in. People are getting scratched. It's every person trying to get as many points for their team as possible. The meet I'm going to be at, the Big Ten meet, also an interesting women's five thousand. Similar situation where teams will be scrapping for points, but two big names there: uh, JoJo and Aaron Finn, and Catherine Receiver. That's right, and. Erin Finn making a really impressive comeback from her winter injury that kept her out of the Indoor National Championship. She came back um, one of the first meets at Stanford right. running 15.33, which is only a few seconds off her outdoor PR, 15.26. Yeah. So clearly she was able to get through what was maybe a minor injury rehab right away, and she's back to the old Erin Finn again, which nine, is great to see. Nine conference championships for Erin Finn between indoor, out there, and cross country. Four runner-ups. At NCAA, is like she. It's hard has, not to bet on her. <laughs> right. I mean, if she's healthy, she's in it. Right, and we were talking about this before. How many people have double-digit conference championships throughout three sports? I mean, that the, the. I mean, obviously Edward Cheserek, but <laughs> right. You're in very, very select company. We talk about double-digit conference championships. One thing that's surprising. You said receiver probably 15 in the five. I was surprised. I've always assumed Catherine Receiver had run a 10,000, but she she no, never has. No, yeah, she hasn't. Yeah, last year she was top five. Maybe top three in both the 15 mm -hmm. and the 5K. Yeah. Um, it will be interesting to watch. And she what actually she does. just PR'd in the 1500. She ran a 414. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's fit too. Yeah, and as we're recording this, we don't know the entry. So that, that's why there's so much wild right. speculation about who's going to do what, where. Also in that women's uh, 10,000 weeks, you know, Wisconsin should have um, some good entrance with Monson and Davis. Uh, Penn State has Jillian Hunsberger. There's a lot of depth there in the Big Ten. Uh, women's 5,000. Let's shift down though in distance. We'll stick in the Big Ten. Men's 800. Isaiah Harris is going for his sixth straight Big Ten championship in the men's 800. He's never lost a Big Ten. Will he 800s. lose this weekend? He will not lose this weekend. I, I am. <laughs> I am sure of it. I will walk back from Bloomington if Isaiah Harris does not win <laughs> the men's 800. I not think a better measure of performance for him might be how close he can get uh, to that conference championship record. Oh, it what, it, since what is that, Mark? It is 146.12. Mm -hmm. Kaz Loxham of Penn State ran that okay. in 2012. Um, and, I mean, Isaiah Harris has broken 146 nine times. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of depends if someone like Daniel Kuhn can kind of keep up with him and push the pace. Yeah, and Kuhn, we're not, we're not overlooking him, it's just how good Isaiah Harris is. Kuhn won the 600-meter indoors for Indiana and finished uh, fourth NCAA indoors in the 800. So one of the nation's best 800 runners. It's just Harris is that good in this setting. And he's coming off a 144 split in the sprint medley relay at, at Penn yeah, Relays. That's right. So even if you account for, okay, I got a running start, that's still a very, very good time. And it's a very good sign for Isaiah Harris at this point in the, in the championship season. I think that conference record, I think, that conference record I think it could go down. I've been amazed by Harris's just consistency, not just from one season to the next, but from one race to the next. I mean, he never really has a bad race. He's always so steady. Even in the indoor season when Saruni was doing this, Saruni was doing that, we were all talking Saruni because he was running great. Harris gave him everything he had at yeah. indoors. And if it wasn't for that last little burst by Saruni 
at the end, Harris could have done it. And Harris is a guy who's finished top four in the NCAA meet four times now in, yeah. in his career. I mean, and he beat Cerrone twice last year. Yeah. You know, I mean, the 800 is one of the, you know, like a lot of these middle distance races. There's a lot of jostling, mid-pack, elbows. You never know when someone could go flying. His consistency is, he doesn't race the same way Nick Simmons does, but just his consistency and his ability to peak for the big races is very, like, Simmons-esque, I think. Um, big 12, though. Let's go to your... Big 12. Yeah. Men's 400. The men's 400. This is going to be a fast race. I'm pretty excited for this one. Uh, Will London from Baylor is really excited to win. To go go for the win and his what would be his third, <laughs> <It's over>. straight, <laughs> third straight Big 12 victory right. in the 400 meters. I mean... Will London, kind of like what you were just saying earlier with Saruni and Isaiah Harris, he's kind of overlooked because of how good Michael Norman is this mm -hmm. year. Uh, Will London made the world team last year. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Norman didn't do that. Uh, and he's run 44-72 already. Right. He struggled a little bit with a hamstring injury earlier in the season. If you want to learn more about Will London, read the feature on Flow Track right now. Um, and so he had to watch the NCAA final from the bleachers right. and, and watch Michael Norman break the world indoor record. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's got eyes eyes on that national title. I mean, Will London's career, I mean, it's like a roller coaster, right? He's eighth at NCAAs, right? Then qualifies for the world championship somehow. Yeah. Then comes back, gets the injury during indoor season, and then now back up again, running one of the top times in the nation. And this will be... You know, we've been comparing him to other runners. We've been comparing all the runners, you know, throughout the season. But now that we're on conference time, we kind of have a little more apples to apples comparisons because everybody's going through rounds and stuff. Right. So I am intensely interested in just matching up um, after this weekend, matching up the best men's 400 meter runners because it's not just no run. I mean, it's it's the, the rest of the USC contingent that's out there as well too that could run right. really well. And it's not like the best the rest of the Big 12 is like a pushover right. 400 field. I mean Derek Mokalang from TCU beat him uh, indoors. You know he finished fifth in the NCAA 400 mm. meter final. So he's got to get he's got to get by that guy. Yeah. I mean Nathan Allen and Akeem Bluefield uh, at Auburn as well too. So that that final in NCAA was really interesting and this is kind of the first first step towards that. Right. Uh, uh, women's 400 at Big 10s was one of the ones I highlighted as well too. Uh, when I was there for indoors, I was really taken by just the depth uh, of, of the women's um, field in the Big Ten, the yeah. 400. It, you know, and then Purdue is not one of the teams we usually talk about right. nationally, but... Second last in the indoor 4x4, um, you know, behind USC, who <laughs> had Kendall Ellis on the team, right? So the Big Ten, you know, it's not... With all the headlines being made in the NCAA with, with Sydney and Lena and, and Kendall, it's easy to overlook, but the depth in the Big Ten, like one to ten, is huge. Yeah. With Brian Thomas, Brianna Guillory, Emerald Egwin, Chloe Abbott, Janaea Mitchell. I mean, and three of those women are from from Purdue. Brianna Thomas comes in with the best seed time, uh, but Brianna Guillory won indoors 400 from Iowa, and then Emerald Egwin of Minnesota last year won it outdoors. So I always like those matchups where it's like last year's champion, the indoor, outdoor, like everything kind of colliding, the season best. That should be a really, really hot race. I mean, Thomas right now is sixth in the nation. Her mark is sixth right. best in the nation. It's been pretty cool to see her kind of explode onto the scene this year. She'd never made an NCAA final before indoors yeah. and took home fifth place. So, uh, I mean, it's interesting that she lost to the other athlete at the indoor conference meet because based on nationals and the season best, I would bet on her. Sure, sure. And it's funny because Purdue just has such a, a deep bench and it was really pronounced at indoors because there was a 600 at indoors. So they could throw some people in the six, some people in the four, and then they all came together to, to the four. So did Thomas run the four or the six? She ran the four. She did But there was the other members of the four by four who ran the six just to spread out the yeah. amount of points because at a certain point, Right, you're going for points and there's diminishing returns if you're throwing everybody in the 400 right. when you could win the 600 as well too. So women's 400 at the Big Ten should be a great race. I mean, those were just a few of the names. It goes even deeper than that. Uh, Maggie Berry of, of Ohio State, they have, Ohio State has um, some big names in there as well too. Even shorter distance, women's 100 meter hurdles. We had a chance to go out to UT yeah. this morning and talk to Tanja Buford Bailey, the head coach of Texas, about her squad. And one of the events they're really excited about is, is women's 100 hurdles. 
Right, so indoors at Big 12s, we saw the Texas women sweep the 60 meter hurdles. And based off of that, and the fact that Rochelle Burton um, and Padrea Seymour are ranked, both ranked in the top 10 in the NCAA right now, mm -hmm. it looks like they have a really strong chance to do the same in the 100 hurdles outdoors. Now, you add in Ariel, you know, who's going to get that third spot? Mm -hmm. Ariel Jones, On the who's wall. really a 400 hurdler. Yeah, shout out, Ariel. Um, she was second in the 100 hurdles last year at conference. And then you also have Mariam Abdul-Rashid, who is also right up there with those girls. Ariel also has won three straight Big 12 titles in the 400 hurdles. She would be the first female athlete to win four years in a row if she wins this Yeah, weekend. and as Tanja mentioned this morning, this is not a conference that takes the formula hurdles lightly. They had Olympic yeah. champion Melaine Walker went to Texas. I mean, there's a long history of standout performances in the in the women's hurdles, long and short, uh, in, in the Big 12. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a fun one. I mean, the sweep is such a powerful thing in a conference meet, especially if you're like Texas and you're going for the the team score, right? If you go one, two, three, 24 points, you, I mean, yeah. in the bag. It's and, just, and especially last year, you know, they lost. Texas lost the team title by such a small margin right. to Kansas State, and this year it's going to be very close again. So they're really going to want to take advantage of those marquee events like the hurdles where they have a lot of top athletes. And we were hearing, too, potentially like four or five teams in the mix Yeah. for, for the women's competition there overall. So I mean, we'll see how it shakes out. That's, but that's there's a, a lot. lot of, um, a, lo a lot of deep teams, teams that are have top athletes through a lot of different events. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's also going to be interesting to see who who wins that individual crown, right, between Rochelle Burton and Padrea Seymour. Mm -hmm. uh, Seymour just transferred this year from the University of Illinois. This is her fifth year. Um, both of those women have international experience competing at Worlds and Olympics. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, between them. Seymour. Tanja said Seymour has boss times, which I think is a term <laughs> that needs to be used more in track and field. She said she has some boss times. Yeah, I think she's run like 12-6. Right. Yeah. I mean, she's running, the, she's running internationally. She's, right. she's competed at the highest level, so don't really need to worry about pressure uh, getting the best of her. The final Big 12 event you want to talk about, men's 100 and two, we're throwing two events in here. Just right. the men's Because they're headlined sprints. by the same person. Yes. Divine Oduduru from Texas Tech. Uh, indoors, we saw him win the 200 at Big 12s, get second to his teammate, Andrew Hudson, in the 60, but he's the overwhelming favorite to win both events this weekend. And Tech is in the battle for the team title, and they would need right. a, a big I showing mean, for Duro to do they that. They won their first ever conference title in program history indoors, so definitely gunning for that outdoor title as well. They have a lot of big names on their team, Duro Hudson, Trey Culver in the high jump. Like They have the ability... To, to score big points at the national meet. Conference a little different, but they're expected to be uh, right in there. Do you have a time prediction for Mr. Adurudu? Yeah, so, I mean, he's ranked, um, of win legal times, he's ranked number one in the NCAA right, right now. Um, and I think he could definitely stand a chance to go after uh, the Big 12 conference record, which is 10.03. Okay. So, I mean, it would have to take the win cooperating. Yeah, 2-0. 2.0, Waco. Do a 2.0. <laughs> no more, no less. 2.0. Interesting stat. But I think it's possible. I think before the Michael Johnson meet this year, he, he didn't have a win legal 100 to his name in college. Like, everything, oh, was, really? <laughs> everything was not win legal. He just didn't, he didn't run the 100 in that, in that right, race. Right. He, ran, he ran, uh something else. But, yeah, his stats are impressive. You know, number four in the 200 um, and number six uh, is that number six and number five all conditions um, in the 100 and the 200. So, I mean, he's one of the nation's best. And his teammate, Hudson, right there with him. I mean, there's not much of a yeah, drop off. Yeah, and, and I mean, he pulled off the upset indoors in the 60. Yeah. So, it's definitely possible. Um, yeah, if you have a chance, go back and watch. Uh, it was our tasty race of the week a couple weeks ago, his uh, nation leading 100 meter time. Yeah. And Michael Johnson. Quick. As that was when legal. They just made though, right? those guys look so slow. <laughs> yeah. One guy fell out of the blocks, right? Was that the one where someone fell yeah, out of the blocks, like two yeah, strides the in? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Hope that guy's okay. Okay, Mountain West, last race. Last uh, race, another 100-200 doubler. Ashley Henderson. Don't Henderson sleep on Ashley Henderson. From San Diego State. I feel like she does not get as much attention as she deserves. Well, she's going to get the attention right now because we're talking about Ashley Henderson. <laughs> 1098 this year. She hasn't lost a Mountain West Conference final 
in over two years and is one of the top sprinters in the nation. A lot of attention goes to the SEC, to the Pac-12, to these other conferences right. and stuff. But Ashley Simpson, or Ashley Simpson, <laughs> Ashley Henderson <laughs> is out there uh, just just tearing it up yeah. in the mountain. And, and she's come she's come close to winning. You know, she's a two-time NCAA runner-up. Yeah. Hasn't quite um, won that title, but indoors, if Gabby Thomas hadn't broken the NCAA record, Ashley Henderson would have been your champion if from, it takes that a from that first section. Yeah, exactly. If it takes a collegiate record to beat you, you're pretty good. And Ashley Henderson fits into to that category. I don't think she'll get any competition this weekend, but it'll just be a fun watch the clock type of race yeah, for her. Yeah, definitely. I mean, last year she won the 200 by almost a second, the 100 by half a second, and this year the seed times are pretty similarly spaced out from uh, her season's best. So, yeah, I, I think she has a good chance of, of winning the titles again. <laughs> exactly. Okay, other races of interest. That was only nine between the three meets. What else are you going to be looking for, either in the conference you'll be at or the other two? Um, so Sharon Lucchetti of Kansas last year uh, was the seventh woman in Big 12 history to sweep the 5K and 10K titles. This year, she looks on track to do it again. She's, I mean, she's almost a minute faster than anyone else in the field uh, in the 5K and 10K. And I believe she'd be the first woman to win all four, to win, to, sorry, to win two titles in two consecutive years. Okay, solid. I'm looking at the men's hurdles at Big Ten. David Kitziria of Illinois, talking about sweeps and winning both, is positioned to win the 110 and the 400. He won the 400 last year, didn't win the 110s. He got second last year, a couple weeks ago at Mount Sac Relays, beat Aries Merritt in the 110. He's the number one seed in both races. He's run 17 races this year. I mean, he ran both. A lot. At Drake, he ran the prelims and the finals of the 4x4. Four four. Like, he, get, <laughs> he gets in work during the week, and that's structured um, intentionally. Uh, we have a, a profile of him coming up on the site on Thursday. But that will be a fun like, individual race to watch. He should be fine in terms of um, winning the race. Um, Antoine Lloyd of Nebraska beat him in the 60s indoors but Kadir is like the longer the race goes at least to the 110s you know the better he's going to do but he hasn't PR'd yet this year he's PR'd every year but now just the consistency he feels like he's knocking on the door and we could see a big time drop um, for him the other one I want to talk about but I'm going to hold it because we're going to do predictions next well, no no talk about your other one well it, prediction. It, it, it involves what it the involves prediction. Prediction. it involves my prediction okay. but I'll go right into it our one prediction uh, she's on the wall right there Danae Rivers the a Big Ten mid-distance is going to be fun. I'm assuming she's going to run the 8 and the 15. Like we said, we don't know yet. She's run both in the past. Indoors, she focused more on the 800. But right now, the NCAA lead in the 800 uh, is 201 by Jasmine Frey. 201-18. I see a big PR coming for Danae Rivers this weekend if she runs the 800. She's run uh, 202 before. Uh, I could see a new NCAA leader this weekend and a big, That'd be pretty big. A, a big PR for Danae Rivers. Who's going to help push her? Nobody. She's Danae Rivers. She's all good. <laughs> <laughs> she's just going to go do it. Well, I mean, Morrissey of, of Michigan has run really fast, the, the senior, and she's dropped a bunch of time this year, but Rivers is well clear in the eight. I, I think if, if anyone's going to contend with her, it's going to be in, in the 1500. But I just, she's only a sophomore. You forget because she's so good, so young. So I think, I think she's due for a personal best and that's what I'm thinking um, this weekend. Hmm. Yeah. That's bold. Well, like it's hard to go run a 201 by yourself. It's hard. Well, maybe someone will stick with her for a while. I'm also counting on the weather cooperating in Bloomington. Right. Which, never a guarantee. Well, Especially when I'm traveling somewhere. <laughs> the weather goes south very quickly. I know in Waco, it's going to be hot, and you can count on that. Yes. So my, predict my bold prediction for the weekend, and maybe it's not that bold because Will London basically already made this prediction. But he said he's going to run no slower than 44.7. <laughs> Your prediction is built. So I agree with him. <laughs> and I think he's going to break the Big 12 Conference Championship record, which is 44.6. And has been, wow, it was set in 2000 by Michael Blackwood from Oklahoma. Okay. So 18 years is long enough. Okay. And eight. I was going to say that needs to be bolder because you're only predicting he's going to go a tenth faster than he said, at least. But an 18-year-old record? Is an 18-year-old record, so that's right. good. I like it. And the fact that it's in Waco, Texas, 
Like, you know, I mean, the weather's going to be hot. It's great sprinting conditions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last year, the conference championships were in Kansas, and it was kind of windy, and, you know, the weather doesn't always cooperate in, in some of these different schools in different parts of the country. Right. But I think if it's in Texas, it's going to be hot. Sprints are going to be fast. Nice. Count on that. Okay, that's it for the show. You guys can tune in to all the action this weekend. Like JoJo said, Thursday all the way through Sunday between the Mountain West, the Big 12, and the Big 10. We'll be on site. Um, check it all out. Like I said, the entries, the previews, everything else will be online. That's right. Check it out. We'll see you out there.